Hey guys, this is Mike with Peters Industry Training and Consulting. Today we want to talk about a new programming language uh, called SCL. Uh, that's basically a high language like uh, PHP or C. Um, just a little bit like simplified for the TIA. Um, what we're gonna do is like we stick to our like previous lessons and uh, build a operating hours counter um, this time just using SCL instead of the uh, letter diagram and uh, I hope that helps to understand a little bit more about the SCL language um, let's dive right in okay so first of all um, we need to set up a new device and um, the data blocks for that. We already created the times um, data block in the previous lessons. And um, as you can see here, I already prepared that. We started with device one through four and I added a fifth device here, um, just like using basic integer um, to like process that like timer up like the um, the counter operations so what we're going to do is we set up a function block um, in this particular um, like function block I called it um, the SCL uh, operating hours counter that is basically where we call it when I um, excuse me when I where we write the code and then I set up a second um, function block where we call that particular function block so in order to um, do what we did before like with the SCL language uh, we can like we can set that up um, really simplified without like using too many too many operations um, and get the same result. Sometimes the SCL language really helps to simplify things. Sometimes it makes it more complicated. It really depends on your um, on the on the on the things you want to want to create. Um, but like in our in our lesson here, it's a it's an operating hours counter. So that's a real simple task and. Uh, the SCL language will really simplify that as you can see in a minute so um, we got to set up some some data before in the um, in the internal data um, area of the function block I already prepared that a little bit um, so we have a uh, a bool device active with as an input and we have outputs um, that's all integers that's why I put that B for bool and I for integer in front of it to just like give that data a little bit more structure so in this case we need seconds minutes hours and days um, we also need as we used that in the previous lessons a positive trigger that I created in the on temporary area here and we need another um, like a kind of like a flag um, that we have to create and I create that in the static area and I just call it um, counter seconds SCL create that here and it will be a bool that's fine so um, in order to to get the operations done as we did that before um, like some of you might have seen that in programming language like PHP or C or something um, we basically work with like if statements and then um, like if something is true then um, like execute something else and that's basically what we're gonna do with the SCL language here so let me just start in and um, create the first line of code so we start with if and then we say okay if and then B 
and then as you can see this like little window pops up and you can choose from different um, data um, and just click click on it and that's your first um, condition so if this condition and and then we go for um, the clock bit again and we use that one Hertz what equals one second if that and one second is true then and then just like don't worry about like um, capitalization um, just like type then and it will like capitalize it anyways so then enter and then we say okay if device active and clock one hertz is true then do something and in this case we want to um, use the counter seconds SCL and say okay um, we want this to be set as true and then you just say colon equals and then say true and then if you click on it it will take it well whenever you do something like that um, so every executable line that you write has to end with a semicolon so otherwise it will give you that like red underlines like it is here because this if statement is not completed yet so we will get to that later but for now it's like the counter seconds SCL we set that to true and then enter and then we want to end that if statement so what we do is like end and then it pops up and we want to say end if so also every if statement incomplete has to end with a semicolon so we say semicolon and then you see this like little line here that means like okay this if statement is completed and then you say enter again and then the next thing we want to do is to um, get our positive trigger that we used in the previous lessons and uh, we I already set that up here in the temp so this time because it's really hard to write that line of code um, yourself you just use one of the instructions go on here and see okay bit logic operations um, R trigger F trigger and if you see that R means rising trigger and F means falling trigger so in this case we want to have a rising trigger what would be a positive trigger just double click and then it will ask you for a data block that is uh, an instant instance data block like um, assigned to that operation you just say okay or give it a name whatever you want in this case we, we say okay and then it asks you for a um, for a condition when uh, the condition that is like um, um, where the query is like asking for okay whenever that condition goes to true um, it will um, it will like trigger that like positive uh, um, bit so in our case we want to monitor the um the data of counter seconds scl so you just write like the first couple of letters and then you just click on it and then also you want to uh, have a output and in our case that would be post trigger and that's about it so the next line of code let's get a little bit of space here you see that line again that means like this statement is complete so now we gotta go to the counting operations um, this actually is pretty easy easier and less writing of code than it was before with the letter diagram so we just dive in and say okay if positive trigger then and what we want to do now is like take integer seconds and then say 
equals integer seconds plus one semicolon so that first line is ready and then what we want to do here is end the statement and if semicolon and we can go forward what happened here is like okay it takes it makes integer seconds equal integer, integer seconds plus one so every time this is triggered here it will add one to integer seconds and write that in integer seconds it's that easy so let's go let's move forward and um, let's say the next if statement if and now we don't need the trigger anymore we see it just like i seconds is bigger or equal oops equal 60 then do something and in our case we want i seconds be equal to zero let's say zero and then don't forget the semicolon and we also want that when that happens we want i minute equal i minute plus one semicolon and then okay and this would end our if statement and if semicolon and we can move forward to the next line of code what would be if and at this time we want if i minutes is greater or equals 60 then do something in this case we want i minutes equal zero semicolon and we want i hours be added so in this case we would say equal i hours plus one semicolon so then end the if statement don't forget the semicolon you see every time you end the if statement it like lines it up to this line and say okay so the if statement is from here to here it's from if to end if and um, that makes it pretty pretty easy to like overlook everything so and then we have one more to do here that would be put a little bit of space in between and then we want again if and then i hours is greater or equals 24 then i hours equals zero semicolon and i days this is actually like if you say that colon and like it's you can say that that's like our move um condition um from the ladder diagram or it's a pointer also so um, you can you can call it what you want. It's just doing that whatever when you say that that means either that whatever comes after that colon and equal sign um, will get moved into I days or um, Whatever happens after that will be uh, moved into that I days so it, it is like a pointer or a 
um, a move operation at, at, at the same time. So in this case, we want now i days equal i days plus one semicolon and then we end our if statement with and if and then semicolon. So, um, well, that's about it. That's it was pretty easy and not that much code, huh? So this time um, we want to first save the project and then we call our function block here in within the function block operating our devices SCL. So if you click on that, I already prepared that. So um, I said, like first of all, I said device five, it's a Boolean. Um, I set it to true um, so that device five is active and then I call the operating hours um, function block um, and said okay so device active equals device five what we set to true here and then i seconds uh, equals times device five seconds um, as we created that here in the data block here you can see device five seconds minutes hours days so we just like pointed to that data um, in within the call of the um, operating out of devices SCL function block so when, when you did that don't forget that this operating hours device SCL here wasn't called yet so we have to call that somewhere either in another function block or like we did that before in the main OB1 and I prepared that as well already so I call operating hours device SCL and the operating hours device SCL data block what is an instant data block um, and it shows you like the FB and the DB number here already so just type in call and then start with the name of the operating hours device SCL and it if you hit enter it will automatically do uh, call the data block for you too so and it will show you what kind of data block and what kind of uh, function block it calls for you so it's that easy when you have that then you can again you go on your main block here the PLC one where all the code is in and all the all the program blocks and everything go on um, normally this year you can start the simulation in my case the simulation already ran one time so you can say okay go online and then select whatever you want in our case uh, the profinet ethernet so and then use the uh, whatever is your um, cart um, and then normally well wait a second this is not right so it should be go offline okay now you can start the runtime here start simulation so start simulation starting simulation will disable all other interfaces that's okay um, and then it takes a couple of seconds until that pulls up and as you can see here it might look different than um, on your system because I upgraded my system to Windows 10 um, because the the new Siemens uh, software v14 is now released for Windows 10 so you can use all that like nice features of Windows 10 and um, can just like use the v14 since the v13 will soon not be um, supported anymore there will be no updates for the future because Siemens now switched totally to the v14 um, I will you can you can download that v14 as a trial version as you could that uh, with the v13 and um, basically you don't have to do that because the the v14 and the v13 are pretty similar and um, other than the multi-user server 
and some little bug fixes um, there's no not so much new in it so um, you could also like finish your project here and our lessons with the v4 uh, 13 that's not a problem so when you did um, load the simulation what I do now load um, it will then ask you to start all and you finish that and you can see here the CPU the simulation will go and run and then we can see if we did everything right um, just go to the times data block and then whenever you're on there just click monitor here and then you can see if it works or not mm -hmm. so as you can see here something is off here okay so the um, the device five seconds did count to one but not higher and as you can see here the other ones they're counting quite good so as you remember we said um, at the end of the last lesson we set device 3 and device 2 to active uh, oh I'm sorry device 2 and device 4 to active the other ones are not active that's why they are not counting but like what's what's wrong here with our device five seconds so something is not working because it doesn't count up so now we go into our troubleshooting um, if you go on that one and then get rid of that I'm going to get rid of all the other tests here so that we can see that and then you go on monitor then we will see what happens here or what happens not um, so what happens so this is set to true that's fine this triggers okay so then this oh okay so that is what you have to think about so we set this on true but we never reset it so what you have to do so like in all other languages in the TIA um, this program runs from the top to the bottom so that means like in every cycle that the PLC does it runs from the top to the bottom runs up and down so what we have to do in the first line and that is why I let that first line free so we want to reset this first this bit counter seconds SCL to false so every time this code runs through that um, through the function block it starts with a counter seconds SCL condition on false so you just type counter seconds SCL and then say equals false and then semicolon and this is about it and now you just say okay download to device load and now you can see if we go on times database here we go seconds is counting up so that is all don't forget to reset everything what you set to one and you only use it one time you gotta reset that in one of the first lines of your code to false so that it actually can trigger the next time you call it that's that's basically it so um what we're gonna do now I can I can show you where you can like download the um, trial version for the semantic step 7 tier portal version 14 trial download um, I will put that link in the description um, and I hope this lesson was helpful I know uh, it was not as long as the other ones but um, I think that is enough on that topic if you want to know more um, you can just visit our website um, at www.peters-industry-training.com and um, you can get like um, a course for certified um, Siemens programmer and so on.